Salutations, YouTube. What's up? Straight Six fan here, checking in again. Going to continue on the old Rat Rod Radio Flyer project. A um, couple things. First, foremost, uh, hopefully the weather's as nice wherever you're catching this from. Uh, hopefully it's nice for you uh, like it is here in Kansas. Um, I would have the garage door open. I think get a little more natural light in here. Take it in. Problem is, just worry a little bit about the, uh, the neighbor's kid. He's a talker, so I kind of figure that might, um, might, oh, make these, make these videos a, a little, a little more interesting. Uh, I, I, as you can see, I lose my focus as it is. Um, but if you've been watching all along, uh, we tried the, uh, the vinegar rinse out of the gas tank and, um, whatever I captured on the first one, that was only about half the vinegar in there. Uh, the second half wasn't much, much different. Um, but there were some rust flakes that did come out. So in all fairness, uh, I don't know if you can see any of the flakes floating in there or not. Um, but maybe it, maybe it works. I don't know. Uh, but as we've, as we've come a little further on, uh, I, I have elected to do the, uh, put some pea gravel in here and water. Uh, and I'll, I'll go into that in a little more detail here. I'll probably wrap the show up with uh, dumping it out and see how it did. Um, if this doesn't work, I'll move to, to sand. Uh, I've got a, a sandbag in my truck that's popped open as it is. Uh, so just grab, grab some sand from that. But uh, we'll run through that here at the end. Other thing was this weekend had a uh, wrapped up, pretty close to wrapping up. The uh, patio project has been ongoing for about three years now, so that felt good. But while we had a run up to a town about oh, 20 miles northeast of where I live, uh, my wife and I, we work out on Saturdays sometimes. So we did that and um, got a couple of things to wrap up the patio project with. So, uh, But then I made it run to this, this hardware store. It's called Gronus Hardware up in Leavenworth, Kansas, and um, it's just one of those old-fashioned hardware stores that got, got everything, and they have a really nice small engine repair shop in the back, and I knew if someone was going to have a points and condenser for a two-horsepower brakes in Stratton, they would, because I'm not getting any spark on the two-horse, and um, from what I've seen on other YouTube videos, I was guessing I uh, probably needed points and condenser, so I was going to pick that up and work on that today, um, but uh, as, I, as I walked in, it was one of those deals where obviously I didn't know enough information. Um, I didn't have the full pro the full uh, model number of my motor. So the guy kind of, we went back and forth. He was talking about, well, it could have an electrical module, uh, ignition module, or it could be the points, but there, and there's a conversion kit for the points. I wound up walking out of the door with the points and condenser. And then um, as I got home, started studying the, uh, studying the motor a little more, uh, I realized I did not probably have a points module and that we will we'll take a look at uh, my motor and the module came with it. So from what I understand in uh, I probably should have should have picked up on this a long time ago. Obviously, I've read about it for years in uh, the car crafts and the hot rods and whatnot. Um, you know, about mid seventies, General Motors came up with a new way of doing a distributor uh, to go away from the points. The points being the old style, and um, I guess what a points is is it, it, there's kind of like a I think of like a cam camshaft. How a camshaft as it as it comes up, it's got a little lobe on it, and then I'll push up your push rod. You know, points uh, works a little bit of the same. There's a little rocker arm that uh, on the crankshaft there will be a little lobe, and it comes up. It sort of pushes this this little the points, which is is on the rocker, and it sort of taps taps against the condenser. Now I don't know much more of the science than that, uh, but uh, anyway, that that's actually what generates the spark and, and sends it up to the coil. Um, but um, anyway, as I was at the, the hardware store talking to the gentleman, uh, when I came home, I realized I didn't have the didn't have a points ignition module 
and basically back in here if there's a wire coming off of your your coil back to behind the uh the flywheel that's how you know you'll have a, a points well so uh luckily i had a reason to go all the way back to that town later in the afternoon because ran out of a different part for the patio project so ran back to that hardware store and then uh, just brought the motor with me and uh, as me and the parts counter guy talked through it uh turns out and we had the full full model number at that point um realized it, it's supposed to have points but somebody over the course of time upgraded to uh an electric module and um now, now don't take this as gospel but best i can tell the way you you realize aside from the the wire going to the flywheel uh, if you have points or electronic uh, ignition module is um is, is basically the size the the coil is much larger the coil itself is much larger um there you can see the old one and the new one it's about to go on um but a, a points coil is going to be much thicker much fatter so uh, but anyway just wanted to take a little moment and show you guys here um well i should have planned out my camera angles a little better here Okay, so for resetting an ignition module, here's what you're going to want to do. Um, and by the way, you can actually replace a points ignition module straight up for one of these electric ones. Um, it can do a conversion that way. Uh, just get rid of that ignition module altogether and uh, probably save yourself a lot of trouble. You don't have to take the flywheel off to get to the points condenser that way. Um, but anyway, here's what you do is um, we kind of have the quarter inch. Here we are. In case you don't believe me, uh, probably, I don't know if it's focusing, focus, focus, quarter inch uh, screws just, just sort of finger tight in here. And I've seen a little something different online too, but uh, this was confirmed by the parts counter guy. What you want to do is you set, uh, he gave me just one of the, the parts ticket things here, and you set it between your flywheel and the coil itself but you rotate it to where the magnet side comes up. And let's see how, is that pretty even? Could do a little bit better here, I think. And this is basically gonna set your clearance for the magneto and the, uh, and the ignition module itself. So uh, you do that. I've seen people use a business card as well which would be probably a little bit thicker but um this way it helps keep a nice nice uh, tight tolerance and it's something you can just find laying around the house so uh, that's what i like about it nice little tip there so that's how you'll want to set these now i'm just going to tighten these up just till they're snug and then slide this guy out and then probably crank on it a little more uh, keep in mind, you want your governor plate. It's sort of integrated with the uh, with the ignition module, so keep that in mind. Don't want to forget that, or maybe you do. I don't know. So pull this out. Just rotate the flywheel. And wouldn't you know it, string here causing me a little issue. Good news is it's nothing important. If I had to cut it out, I could cut it out. There we are. So there you go. And then, of course, we'll just wind up slapping this bad boy on spark plug, like so. And also, it comes in the kits. Just some miscellaneous uh, items to wire up a kill switch uh, based off the back side of the uh, back side of that. So um, anyway, we'll we'll get to that at some point. I'm hoping the next time I do a video for you guys, you can see this thing start. But we'll um, one thing that's going to keep me from doing that is uh, just before I went on camera, we uh, I was 
was use, got out the torque wrench, was putting on the, the head back on and torquing down the uh, head bolts, half inch bolts, by the way, to uh, 25 foot pounds. Uh, I've seen anywhere from 35 to 25 foot pounds suggested online. Um, something about that was uneasy to me. So I first set up the torque wrench for 20, 28 foot pounds. Um, but as a, I continue to spin and spin the torque wrench, it's like, oh man, I don't know. It doesn't feel, something still didn't feel right. So I backed it off to 25. Uh, of course, I went in a sort of a crisscross pattern, almost like you would when you um, break loose or tighten up tires, lugs on your uh, on your tire when you're changing a tire. Uh, so it's kind of going crisscross. Well, um, so I had it backed off to 25 foot pounds, and I got to. Uh, I thought I had done everything. I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to go back through, and I'm gonna I'm gonna double check myself, and uh, just. You know, so one 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 spun on me, and I kept. Oh, that's interesting. I guess I missed one. I kept spinning, kept spinning until I hear snap. So, of course, uh, we have our first casualty. Lost the head bolt. So, I'll have to find one of those at a hardware store. Um, and it looks like actually now that I'm talking to you guys, this little uh, this little piece that goes up on the head helps sort of manage wire, manage your spark plug wire. I don't know what else it really does. Maybe I don't need it. Um, I forgot it, so it looks like I'm going to have to break loose. Four volts. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get it running. So hopefully you guys have seen the... Uh, I've upgraded my graphics. Finally got the desktop on Friday. I was lucky enough to have a day off on Friday from work. And uh, so I drove down to Wichita. It's where I grew up. And... Um, my brother is rebuilding a computer for me, or building a computer for me. Uh, he didn't get off work correct quite when he thought he was. We were going to meet a little north of Wichita, so I don't have to drive all the way to Wichita and all the way back. But I had some tools from the stencil project to get back to my parents. And um, so I figured, you know what, I got the day off. Weather's nice. Go for a drive. Uh, no big deal. Well, anyway, long story short, we wound up meeting at Harbor Freight. <laughs> So there we are, cut off wheels, as you know, from the uh, the uh, recoil cover plate project. I needed some new ones of those. And uh, feeler gauges. Uh, I feel like I'm getting to that point in my life where I'm starting to do a little more precise mechanical stuff. I know I still have done basic stuff on camera, nothing too crazy, but it's about time to grow up, I guess, and uh, get, get some serious stuff. So... Um, uh, but anyway, uh, so we get back to the uh, the gas tank, and I've gone ahead and I've shook this up for about seven and a half minutes before going on camera. And what I did was uh, I used what I like to call a man's measuring cup, uh, spray spray paint can lid, and uh, had some pea gravel from the old patio project, so filled it up with that. Dumped it in the gas tank. I know the rocket science, right? And then uh, equal parts of distilled water. You don't want to use distilled water. Obviously, tap water can rust. So uh, filled that up, and uh, like I said, shook it for about seven and a half minutes. So um, let's shake it a little more here. And then on the flip side, we'll uh, YouTube. You'll check out with me and uh, see how well it did. Um, Hopefully uh, most of the rust is gone. As it's been explained to me, it's sort of like wet sanding or color sanding, wet sanding the inside of your, uh, inside of your gas tank. I'm a little reluctant to go to the uh, the finer sand because I feel like that's going to be harder to clean out, and I don't want sand in the uh, combustion chamber. So um, I'll hit stop here. We'll do some editing, and uh, we'll come back on the flip side and see what the results are.